My name is Judy Kinney and I'm a head judge with IBCA, which is the International Barbecue Association and we're based out of Fort Worth, Texas. This organization started in the late 1980s and we've been going strong ever since. This past year we did over 265 cook-offs in the state of Texas, Hawaii, Colorado, California, Mississippi, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and I think that was all. <laughs> We're, we're all over. We're basically all over. And we are an organization that we are a nonprofit, and we come into communities to help their nonprofits, like fire departments and stuff like that, to earn extra money because things are tight for them, too, just like it is for the regular economy right now. We are a charitable organization. Every year we clean out our, our coffin. To, uh, we give it to an organization in the Metroplex, which is Dallas-Fort Worth area, and it's a shelter for women and children, for abused women and children. And this past three years, we've given them over $30,000 to this charity, which we feel like we've, we've done very, very well with our cook-offs. Um, this weekend, we're in Sanger, Texas. It is March the 21st, and we've got 45 cooks, I think, as of right now. This is the first year cook-off. We were expecting more, but we've gotten, thank, thanks to God, we've gotten rain this last two or three days. And a lot of these cooks are fair-weather cooks, and but we do have some die-hard cooks that have come out to help support the Elks Lodge. Our function tonight is we're going to have a steak cook-off and a sauce contest. And the cooks have to cook a ribeye steak, and it will be judged, and then the top 10 will go to a final table. When we announce the top 10, they will go back and cook one more steak, and then we'll turn it in and we'll see who has the best steak cooked here this weekend. And along with that will be sauce, and it's any type of sauce they want to turn in. I hope it's barbecue sauce, because this is a barbecue cook-off. And... Uh, you know, we'll see who has the best sauce. But come tomorrow will be when we have our full-blown cook-off. And it will consist of beans, which is a jackpot, 
chicken, ribs, and brisket. The chicken will turn in at 12. The ribs, pork, spare ribs, St. Louis, or long spare ribs will be turned in at 1.30, and brisket will be turned in at 3. And the way we work that is we put so many trays on a table. Each table will have a number, A, B, or C, and the tray will have a number of A, 1, 2, 3, 4, ever how many. They will be passed around, so all the judges at that table will which will consist of a minimum of five, could be more, will taste each tray and give it a score of 10 being the highest and one being the lowest. The only rules that we have about this is that the, the judging is, is their preference. We don't tell them how to, to take what they're tasting, how to look at it or whatever. It's just what they think is good quality taste to them. The only rule that we really have is in the brisket, and it has to be a four to three eighths inches thick. You're not allowed to pick up any of the meat products. We have a fork and a knife that you are to take a slice off of it. If you eat chicken, the chicken, you'll either do white meat or dark meat. We ask that you don't go white or dark on each one of the trays. You just get one small bite, like you would eating at your own house, that size of a bite. And what we'll do then is we'll take the highest scores off of the tables and move them to a final table. And the final table will determine who will be the champ of that meat category this weekend. Then we'll add up the chicken and the ribs and the brisket, whoever has the highest points, and that's how we get our grand champ. And I don't know what the grand champ is going to pay yet here this weekend. We haven't figured the payoff, but the payout, but with 45 cooks, Roughly, there's going to be about $4,500 here this weekend. It'll be divided between three meats. So that's a pretty good payout. Kind of, they rank the meat per their taste. Each one, ten. No, no. They each tray will get a score. They're not saying who's the best tray. They're saying which tray tastes the best to them. And then I will add up all of the score sheets off of that table, and I will take so many from each table. I'll say it'll be a minimum of five will come off of each table, maybe six if we have ties. And then that's my job to rank the, the judging the table, not the judges. Each judge is only to judge that tray and not compare the trays to each other, which is very, very hard not to do. The first bite you might take may just totally blow you away, and you give it a 10, that's great, because you can have more than one 10. Each tray is on its own merit, and that's, that's really hard for people that have never done it, and, and we get people from the community, and this is another thing about us, we have people come in from the community. They're not paid professionals like some of the organizations. We don't have classes. We just instruct them on what we're looking for and how to score it because each community has a different taste profile that they like and if anybody can go to well, these cook-offs and cook anybody can come you do not have to be a member anybody can cook as long as you cook with a wood product charcoal or wood no gas or nothing like that now you can use gas to start it but you can't use gas to cook it and we have a very good following here in the state of texas this past year i did 26 cook-offs and this year i'm just doing 15 because I'm tired. <laughs> Last year wore me out. And I'm, I'm tired. And I'm getting older. But we've been doing this quite a while. We've been with IBCA for over 10 years. I've had a very good ins an inspiration for me to come to IBCA, IBCA, and that's Lynn Shivers. And I praise her every chance I get because she is wonderful and she is one of my best friends. And whenever I run into a problem, I, c I know I can pick up that phone and I can call Lynn and go, this is my problem. This is what I did to solve it. And 90% of the time I'm right, but every now and then she'll say, I don't know. And I say, hell, it worked. She says, okay, you got lucky today. So, but we just, um, we are a very well-known organization. We have over 3,000 members, I think is what our last count was. And uh, we're growing. We're growing by leaps and bounds. And there's just a lot of people, thanks to Pitmasters, are starting to look into doing these barbecue contests. And that's the thing about it is, Anybody can cook with us at any given time if they'll just look at our schedule and see where we're going to be and then come out and cook. And a lot of these cooks, we, they, the new cooks, we suggest that they come and help us in the judging area so they'll understand how it all works and what the profile they were looking for and stuff like that. It's, you know, 
we're open to anybody. Our judging area is never closed. Anybody can walk in and sit down and watch. We ask that you do not talk to the people judging. You can call us over and we will answer your questions. And uh, that's basically how we work things here in the state of Texas. And I get tickled. Everybody says, well, do we have to uh, put sal uh, do a presentation? And I laugh and I say, no, we're from Texas. We're just about the meat. That's all we care about, the meat. We're not into salad. So, but it's, it's fun, and everybody should come cook one of ours. And once you cook one, it'd be hard to go back and cook one of those others because we have people from Kansas that come and cook with us frequently, and they, they love it down here. My name is Victor Cunningham. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here with my friend Sean Carnahan. We're up here to pre-fish for the Texas Team Trail Tournament next week, and because of the bad weather, we've been kind of hanging out in the tent all day in the camper and just came over here to the Elks Club Lodge here, and we were asked to be a judge in the state contest. And I don't know, this, this is pretty decent. Maybe it's a good thing we didn't go fishing today because testing these stakes was something different I've never done before, but they were all good. And uh, I'm just did glad. You, did you find one that was better than you? Yes, I did. And can I take that with me? I, no? Not up to me. Dang. No, I did find one that was really, really good okay. that I, I enjoyed. But they were all good. But one was exceptionally good. And, and I hope the persons that cooked it become a winner because it, I think it was a winner. But uh, thanks for having us here and great hospitality. And maybe we'll be back next year. Who knows? Chisholm here. Yeah, I'm, uh, all right. Uh, my name is Jeff Chisholm. I'm here with my buddy Randy Hargrove. We're both members out here at the Elks Lodge. Uh, we just enjoyed a pretty good bunch of steak. Um, some was exceptional. And uh, I'm glad we did it. It was a, it was a first for me, and I want to bring on some more. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, I'm Randy um, here at the Elks Lodge member. Uh, today we had a lot of good entries. Uh, a lot of people showed up. We, uh, we had some really really good steaks out there, uh, and uh, we had some. Uh, couple of them that I didn't want to pass the plate anyway. <laughs> uh, but uh, Hi, I'm Clay Akers. We're in Sanger, Texas, and I just ate ribeye. Did you like one better than the other? I did. I thought the number six ribeye was, was probably a, the best out of the ten. You had ten entries. That's right, ten entries, and uh, I, number six was my favorite. Okay. My name is Alyssa Cooley. We are in Sanger, representing Sanger, Texas, and we just tried steaks. Which was your favorite? Number five. Hi, I'm Mike Lou Legend from um, Lake Oconee, Georgia, um, here in Sanger, Texas. Uh, thank you very much for having us, and I like number seven the best. I'm Barbara Lou, Lange, Lou Legend from Lake Oconee, Georgia. We're here in Sanger, Texas, uh, judging ribeyes, and for me, it was a toss-up between number one and number seven. Those two were the best for me. Nine one seven
50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Sold it, $40, sold it, $30. What's your number, ladies and gentlemen? Number 15, thank you. Okay, D and K Barbecue. D and K Barbecue, non hall. Here we go now, 20, we'll go 20, now 20, now 30. 20, now 30, we'll go 30, 30, we'll go 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 
we have our hawks, uh, we have our waterfowl, geese and ducks, and we have some of the most beautiful sunsets on this lake of anywhere in the county. We would like to come out, meet you, and greet you, and show you our wonderful establishment here. Two years ago, we constructed a beautiful little RV park because some of our guests wanted to bring their recreational vehicles here and spend a week or spend their vacation or even spend just a night or a weekend. We have 23 RV slips. Uh, we have several pull-throughs and several back ends. We have full water, 50 amp service, uh, guest laundry room, guest showers, and wash houses. Uh, we've received several uh, commendations for our little RV park, and uh, I'm happy to say that uh, it's up to capacity most of the time. If you would like more information on our beautiful lake and marina, or if you would like information on leasing a boat slip or reservations for staying in our new RV park, please contact Lake Ray Roberts Marina at 940-458-7343. Thank you and looking forward to seeing you. Toothpicks to hold the skin down? Yeah, you gotta kind of season under the skin, right? So, at least I do. Well, that makes perfect sense. Oh, shit, I lost a toothpick. That's a bad thing. Yeah, that's a real bad thing. don't have pliers to <laughs> get it back. Dropping the box. Is 
So that's probably lucky, right? This would have been the bad one. I broke a toothpick off in it, and now I'm forced <laughs> to do this winning one. There you go. Actually, that one's the better looking one in it anyway. Gotta shift him around to get him in the box. Yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> and they worry about the sauce on the. Wheel? Yeah, they, won't, they don't let you sauce the. Um, you can't pull, you can't, you know, you really. They're, ICBA says you can't cook, you can cook with sauce, you just can't finish with sauce. Mm -hmm. And so if there's any pooling or anything like that on the bottom, they'll make you... They'll disqualify you? They'll make you go wipe it up. I've seen people in there just <laughs> mopping everything up. You can't have any juice in the bottom. It's crazy. Katie said they're not done. Hmm? Katie said they're not, not done. I'm Jerry McQuiston with McQuiston Barbecue and the guy asked me about Lynchburg and I cooked there in 1992 and I won the brisket and I qualified at Colleyville at the Grand Champion there and it was fun. I took a backyard pit and when I came back from Texas that guy called me wanted to buy a pit and I had two of them exactly the same and they wanted they gave me $300 more for the pit that I won on Jack Daniels than the other pit. So what else you need, sir? North Texas I'm, a, I'm a member of North Texas Barbecue Association, which is not in existing anymore. And I'm a lifetime member of IBCA. Uh, North Texas Barbecue Association was the first barbecue association ever. What were the dates? It was... It was six years before IBCA ever started. And Gary Waymeyer and Jeff Shivers uh, started IBCA. And we would meet with the North Texas Barbecue, Barbecue Association. It was set up to help people with tornadoes or something. And we would go there and cook and feed the town and stuff. And that was, that was when you, you cook brisket only and it was no uh, prize money, and it was for fun. I can remember here in Denton uh, at the fair one year, they only had seven cookers. That was the first year the fair ever had to cook all. And I live here at Sanger, and I think next year would be Sanger 32 years of, of having a barbecue cook all and used to be at Sanger, you showed up, uh, no entry fee, and they'd furnish you all the meat you needed and we would feed the town. But then, you know, some of them went, got greedy and went to taking them briskets home, which by then they were just 19 cents a pound. And so now everybody brings their own meat and uh, the firemen 
feeds the town. What do you think? You could put some powdered sugar on it. It's your, pre it's your presentation. I think the powdered sugar is sweet. Yes. Yeah. All right, go get powdered sugar. Yes, right. You feel better now? Here we go. We <laughs> presentation. I would probably powder it outside the box first. Oh, okay. And then set them in. Oh. Do what? Powder. Shake it! Shake it, baby! Shake it! <laughs> Good. That's what I got there. Let me guess, you're going to eat that. <laughs> Powdered sugar. Well, you're going to snort it. <laughs> No, swap that, swap that one with the other one. Yeah. It's got more sugar than the rest of them. That one, the other one. Oh, oh, I see what's saying. Yes. That one. I think Trey built that one for him anyway. Is that good? Sugar. That was good. Okay, take my glove.